So we're continuing with the UEFA Champions League football discussion on the Sportsmax Zone. One team already booking their spot and will now await their opponents for the showpiece final on the 1st of June at the Wembley Stadium in London. Real Madrid and Bayern Munich will collide on Wednesday at the Bernabeu in the second leg of their semi-final tie, which is currently tied at uh, two goals apiece. And before we continue our discussion with Juan looking forward to this match, something um, dawned on me here, Mariah, that uh, Pepito Barrett, who has won the trip to London to watch the final, is a big Real Madrid fan. But if Real Madrid loses and Bayern Munich and uh, Borussia Dortmund contest the final, that would be something for him to look forward to because he's a German fan. Yeah, he and that would be two that. German teams. So it might not be all that bad for him if Real Madrid doesn't make it to the final. It may not be all that bad, but I think Pepito would much rather watch I, his team. I'm sure he would, but I'm just saying... You're trying that, to find a silver lining. That's yes, very sweet I, of I'm you, I'm just Lance. saying to him that, you know, if Real Madrid flops tomorrow, um, he has two German teams playing in the final and, and he's a big German fan. So. And because of what happened with PSG today, I think you're heading down a good narrative. Oh, I am. Yeah. All right, let, Good me one, see. Nice. Let, me, let me see if Juan agrees with you. Uh, Juan, a, a tight match here. Given what we saw last week, a lot of credit to Bayern Munich and their strategy and how they approached that game to get 2-2. But we know that Real Madrid is uh, the, 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 the impact team when it comes to UEFA Champions League football. They know how to get the results at the right times. And mm -hmm. uh, they go into this game as favorites, you would say? Slightly. I was playing at home. Uh, knowing that they got a result in, in, in Munich. And, of course, and, and going back to what you said last, last segment, it was interesting because what would you say about those Real Madrid teams under Zidane that really didn't play well? Were they the better team? Especially when they played Bayern Munich as well. Keep in mind, they, yeah, but, they kicked them out too. Yeah. Okay, yeah, but Juan, so. the argument is not who is the better team. It's, mm -hmm. it's the better team on the day. People argue that the better team on the... The team that plays better always wins. In other words, you cannot play better and lose. So that is really the, the, the argument, which is what I, I thought the game that we saw today with PSG mm -hmm. and the Borussia Dortmund um, sort of put on the platform how that discussion could flourish because there were many things about the game today mm -hmm. that PSG were, mm -hmm. were dominant mm -hmm. in, but they didn't win. So, so I'm saying, now, I'm saying mm -hmm. though that I know that Real Madrid is the better team. And because they're at home for this return game, you would likely um, place them as favorites here. But we know how these German teams are. They plan very well. And you know what they say about German efficiency. And although Bayern Munich's season overall hasn't been a strong season, it's what happens at the Bernabeu tomorrow that will decide it. Kind of like Dortmund, because everything yeah. that happened in the Champions League basically is what they're hoping and, and seeing. But also, there's one thing to keep in mind. We talk about German efficiency, but we talk about Spanish winning. Plain and simple. <laughs> because in the last nine matches that Bayern Munich and Real Madrid have faced off, Bayern have only won once. Yes. So that's another, I mean, not only history, and of course, at the end of the day, once the whistle blows, trends in history end up going by the wayside. But when you look at it, it this series and, and who's the fresher team well you could say both because Real Madrid played a virtually alternate side yeah Jude Bellingham played some minutes and kind of closed the door on Cadiz and thus winning the league championship this past weekend but then Bayern have been relatively fresh themselves but also they lost to Stuttgart who ends up kind of solidifying their position amongst Champions League teams next year in the Bundesliga so so it, it, it ends up being maybe not as I guess I could use as as uneven as we thought coming into this match between PSG and Dortmund because obviously PSG were playing in their own backyard. Maybe it's a little bit tighter here, but then knowing what we can expect out of Bayern Munich, we don't know in Madrid how things are going to be. We don't know how, how Madrid comes out and we don't know how Madrid are going to play because it ends up being not only just a, a Champions League of note, and of course I mentioned it with Mariah yesterday, on yesterday's zone uh, of how special this league title and this Champions League could be, but it's also now being known that Nacho's not coming back, that you have other players, Luka Modric most likely isn't coming back. So they also are galvanized to be able to, to fortify and, and leave some of the players that have been legends and, and stand by and, and stalwarts in, in their own dressing room, leaving in the, in the best way and riding off into the sunset. Yeah, and while you were making your point, one of course, Thomas Tuchel came on the screen and Thomas Tuchel, after, you know, 
this final, if he goes into the final, let me just say that with Bayern Munich, mm. he'll become the first mm. manager to, of course, make the final with three different teams. So I'm thinking to myself, Thomas Tuchel versus Carlo Ancelotti, how, what type of football, what style of football are we to expect tomorrow? Madrid's, Madrid's such a chameleon that I can say A and they're going to be B, C and D. <laughs> so that, that's that's basically how they play. And it's a team that understands and reads well the concept of the game or the context of the game, I should say, instead. Meanwhile, Bayern know that they have to go out and win it at all costs. Now, if they go into penalties, you have a great penalty stopper in Manuel Neuer. Let's, let's not forget about that. You do have Lunin on the other end who already showed his stuff against City. So it, it's a very even encounter in very different facets of play. It just depends on Real Madrid. It depends on what Bayern Munich are, are coming in and, and going to implement. But also, if there is one thing, one sector of the pitch where you can say Real Madrid can really cause a great deal of difference, and we saw it in, in the first leg, is how they end up breaking down the middle of that Bayern defense. Yeah. How is that going to comport itself in, 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 the, in the overall run of the game? Yeah, and one of the things I tend to find myself doing a lot leading up mm. to matches is trying to find the injury list. And, you know, those things really affect teams. And what will happen tomorrow is Bayern Munich would be a bit disappointed because I'm seeing some injury reports mm. about key players. Eric Dyer is one of them. Opa Meccano is another one. And to me, without those players, I think we're going to see a different Bayern Munich team. What say you? No, and you mentioned two, two, two central defenders, so that's exactly what I'm saying. I mean, and of course, uh, you, you have a, you've had a lot of problems in that sector of the pitch for the entire season for Bayern. So if you're not only losing it in terms of quality, but in terms of quantity and depth, then it makes your, your, your challenge a little bit more of an uphill climb. So to me, that's one of the places to look at. Of course, once the lineups come out, then maybe we can delve into it with a bit more depth. But overall, that's where we end up seeing things. And the difference ends up being at this stage of Real Madrid. Maybe it is going to be Vinicius. Maybe it is going to be Jude Bellingham. Maybe it is going to be the younger players for Real Madrid. But at the end of the day, it ends up being the veterans that come through, the Toni Kroos's, the Antonio Rudiger's, those players, the, the Nachos will probably be in, in central defense once again. And we'll see how things end up with, 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 this, with this Real madrid Bayern encounter because I'm really looking forward to it because it promises to be very enticing. Yeah, and Juan, I, I hate always to juxtapose what happens with teams domestically when they have UEFA Champions League assignments, mm -hmm. but we can't get away from the fact that uh, Stuttgart beat Bayern Munich on the weekend, albeit a, a rotated Bayern Munich um, squad, many of the players being saved for this important assignment. On the other side of the coin, Real Madrid had a fabulous weekend. They not only won the match that they played, but they were confirmed as, as La Liga champions for a 36th time. So mentally, in the past few days, one team is buoyant, and uh, certainly from a domestic standpoint, the other mm -hmm. team is a, little, is a little deflated. I don't know if, def I mean, I don't know so much deflated on one end, because obviously, as you mentioned, it, it's a, it was a pretty, Actually, it was relatively to very alternate side for 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 Bayern Munich against yeah. Stuttgart, but now we can't discount how elated Real Madrid were for winning the league title, and and they ended up watching and basically ended up celebrating in their own houses on, on their own couches, if you will, as they're seeing Barca lose the way they did. But when you look at it, it, it Bayern, it was just a time to kind of sit back and, and, and isolate themselves and and kind of get focused with the task at hand. So I, I wouldn't put too much weight on that loss this weekend because, like I said, it's not the same 11 that we're... Now, if, if it were a starting 11 that was very similar or actually the exact same starting 11 that you're going to see at the Santiago Bernabeu, yeah, I would be worried. But the Bundesliga has been over. Bayern are just trying to jockey for position as best as possible, and they failed to do so against one of the surprise teams in the Bundesliga. Yeah. How much weight do you put on the fact that Ancelotti, a former Bayern um, coach himself understands the culture of, of Bayern Munich, and he boasts a record of never, ever losing to Bayern Munich as an mm -hmm. opposing coach. Well, you could say basically the same thing about Toni Kroos, because he too is a former Bayern. I, I mean, when you're at Real Madrid, and, and, and Carlo Celli said, we have to worry about ourselves first. Everything else kind of falls into place. So when, when he goes out there, it's to see how his 11 are going to behave in certain instances and how they're playing in certain instances when it comes to, to a match of this caliber. So I wouldn't be too, I don't know, I would be too enticed 
into going into thinking what Carlo Ancelotti is thinking about going against a former team of his because he's worried about the present team of his and that's the objective that he looks to have in mind is to get that, that double. Mm. If you're a betting man, Juan, who would you bet on to score tomorrow? Kane or Bellingham? <laughs> Both. Oh, no, Kane, I mean, Kane or Bellingham? Yeah, I, I, would, I would say I would say Harry Kane to score. I mean, to score, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Now to influence, I would definitely say Bellingham because Bellingham doesn't need to score to influence a match. Harry Kane, if he doesn't get shots on target, he Bayern to play basically with ten. Although to be fair so, to Harry Kane, his yeah. his his game as a provider of goals has significantly yes. improved in the last two or three years. Mm -hmm. Yes, it has, but Bellingham is basically a provider. Yes. Keep in mind, he is a provider before he is a scorer. Yes, he just yes. happened to become more of a scorer this season. So, I mean, like I said, if, if you're, if I'm a betting man, I'd bet Harry Kane to score first. Uh, in terms of the overall influence or who could be the man of the match, I definitely have to look the way of, of Jude Bellingham. To me, Jude Bellingham right now is the best player in the world. Yeah, I think you 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 side with bet with uh, Brent Sancho on that because Brent has been on record on the Sports Max Zone mm -hmm. uh, saying mm -hmm. exactly that that he thinks Bellingham is the best player in the world at the moment. Well, you said you mm -hmm. said it at the top of the interview, Juan, that you would mm -hmm. give Real Madrid the edge. So we are wrapping Slight. this. Yeah, we are wrapping the segment now. Uh, give me a prediction, score wise. Well, if, if I were good at betting, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> good, good save, good save, but you have to give no, us no, one. No, 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 but, but I, I'm still going to go because I'm not putting any money in it, you know, and if it were Lance's money, I'd definitely pick wrong. So I'll have to go Real Madrid 2-1. 2-1, Real Madrid. So yes, that, sir. that would be 4-3 on aggregate. And they come from behind to win it. Oh, boy. All right. So that would be 4-3. dramatic. Four. Come on. 4-3 <laughs> on aggregate. Yes, are, sir. Are, are you on the coverage analysis tomorrow? Uh, well, if Mariah wants me there, I'll be there. Correct. I'm in charge. <laughs> Once you know. Okay. Once you know. With She's decide. the one that goes, hey, come back. Focus here. So, so I have to, you know, I, I oblige. I'll decide. I'll decide later. Yeah, exactly. Once. But we want to thank you so much, as always, for joining no us here on the Sports Max Zone. We'll let you know if you're worth coming on tomorrow. <laughs> oh, so it's like that. <laughs> see, you, see you later, one. Goodbye. <laughs> All right, bye. Take your back. Juan Giarango, they of course a friend of the Sportsmax Zone and one of our football analysts. We're taking a break. We'll be right back.